When gaming visionary Hideo Kojima announced that he was working on Silent Hills with Walking Dead star Norman Reedus and Oscar-winning director Guillermo del Toro, fans lost their collective minds. Then, when a demo was released in 2014, it was critically acclaimed. PT simply sounded too good to be true. And sadly, it was. After Konami decided to focus on Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain instead of Silent Hills, Kojima's project was shut down. Naturally, fans were devastated they would never play this game, knowing it had the potential to be a masterpiece. As frustrating as this was, games get cancelled in similar ways all the time. Due to budget limitations, changes in the company, lack of resources or time constraints, thousands of potential games have been abandoned. This can be very frustrating for gamers and developers, but the reason why is usually understandable. There are times, however, when a game is cancelled for the dumbest reason possible. Some of the reasons on this list will sound childish, stupid or fabricated, but there are those decision makers who will scrap years of work on a whim, for the most idiotic reasons imaginable. I am Kirsten from What Culture Gaming, and these are 10 dumbest reasons why video games were cancelled. Number 10. Pirates of the Caribbean Armada of the Damned Nobody thought the Pirates of the Caribbean film would be any good, but it went on to become a billion dollar franchise, spawning sequels, reinvigorating Johnny Depp's career and being the biggest thing to come out of Disney for a decade. Naturally, the company merchandised the hell out of the Pirates series. Surprisingly, Disney didn't seem to focus much on video games. There have been a few Pirates games, but the quality ranges from mediocre to terrible. So when Propaganda Games released a stunning trailer for Pirates of the Caribbean Armada of the Damned, it looked like Disney had sorted out its priorities. Armada of the Damned was a prequel and would focus on completely different characters, which was a smart move since the game didn't come across as a rushed movie tie-in. Sadly, Disney scrapped it to focus on the movie tie-in, Tron Evolution, to prepare for the release of the film Tron Legacy. Disney assumed the film would be such a hit it would become the next big franchise. Sadly, Tron Evolution didn't do well at the box office, the franchise was scrapped and the game was terrible. This means Pirates Armada of the Damned was canned for nothing. Number 9. Super Mario Spikers After the success of the soccer game Super Mario Strikers, Next Level Games began working on a volleyball-themed game for the Wii called Super Mario Spikers. To jazz up gameplay, the company implemented wrestling moves into Spikers mechanics. When Next Level Games showed a demo to Nintendo, they were horrified by its violence and said it violated Nintendo's code of honour. Although Mario games have always had violence, the fighting in Spikers was considered too realistic for younger players. As a result, Nintendo decided not to go through with the game. This decision is a little baffling. Why didn't Nintendo simply ask Next Level Games to take the violence out? You know fistfights aren't common in volleyball, right? If you had to think of the 10 most violent sports, volleyball probably wouldn't spring to mind. The sport is simply knocking a ball over a net. You know what's another sport that does that? Mario Tennis. The Mario Tennis franchise has the exact same premise, so why was that adapted into a game but Spikers wasn't? Also, how is punching a volleyball more violent than smacking Mario in the face with a falcon punch in Super Smash Bros? Number 8. 8 Days in 2005, SCE London Studio released a tech demo of 8 Days, an action-packed shooter which took place over 8 days. The shooter utilised a real-life clock, so if you played it at night, it would be nighttime in the game. Because the story spanned over 8 states, 8 Days had the largest map in gaming at the time. Despite the company's ambition, 8 Days was cancelled for an incredibly random reason. It couldn't be played online. Now, if this was a beat-em-up or a MMORPG, this logic would be understandable. Certain genres demand or require an online mode, but since 8 Days was a single-player shooter, this seemed like an odd request. More so, consider the game's lack of an online mode is what broke the camel's back and cancelled the entire game. Imagine if Breath of the Wild or Super Mario Odyssey was cancelled because an executive suddenly didn't like how the games lacked an online mode. How does it affect the gameplay? What difference does it make? It's a shame that gamers never got the chance to play such an interesting shooter for such a petty reason. Number 7. Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness 2 in 
1980, Namco launched a little arcade game called Pac-Man. 40 years later, it has made over $14 billion, launched 30 sequels, got his own animated series, and appeared as the antagonist in a terrible Adam Sandler comedy. Despite all the great games Namco has churned out in nearly half a century, Pac-Man is still the company's most profitable IP. His female counterpart, Miss Pac-Man, became so successful she generated her own series including Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. This game took place in a labyrinth like the original games, but it was in 3D, and had many creative mechanics to keep the gameplay exciting. The game sold well enough to warrant a sequel. As Maze Madness was approaching completion, Namco merged with Bandai, which led to some restructuring with their gaming properties. Bandai executives assumed Pac-Man had peaked and gamers were no longer interested in the series. This is a little odd since Pac-Man is literally the mascot of the freaking company. Without researching sales, Bandai decided to cancel Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness 2. Thankfully, the company learned the error of their ways, eventually, and has regularly pumped out Pac-Man games ever since. Number 6. Jurassic Park Survival Jurassic Park Survival was a game developed by Savage Entertainment, meant for release in 2001, the same year Jurassic Park 3 debuted. Although the game started off as an adaptation of Jurassic Park 3, the developers believed it would work better if the story was unconnected to the movies. The game's publisher, Konami, was furious since they believed survival would only be successful if it was a direct tie-in for Jurassic Park 3. Konami stopped paying Savage Entertainment, forcing survival to be halted indefinitely. There are three things wrong with this decision. Firstly, if a game comes out after the movie it's based on, it doesn't necessarily mean the game will fail. GoldenEye 007 was delayed so much it came out two years after the GoldenEye film, and yet was hailed as one of the most influential shoot 'em ups ever. Secondly, a game doesn't have to be a movie tie-in to be good. Rocksteady tried to make a tie-in for The Dark Knight, but it was so heavily delayed they reworked many ideas into Batman Arkham Asylum, which spawned the greatest Batman game franchise of all time. And what's the third reason? Jurassic Park 3 sucks. Number 5. Parasol Stars ZX Spectrum Version Parasol Stars is the third entry in the Bubble Bobble series. In the game, the player is armed with an umbrella which can be used to stun or hurl enemies, shield you from attacks, or capture water droplets. Parasol Stars was released on several systems, including the Commodore Amiga, the Game Boy, and the NES. Unfortunately, the ZX Spectrum version was cancelled due to a supposed burglary of the game's files. After a bit of investigating, it was unveiled that the game wasn't stolen. It was deleted by the developer's wife. Not only was she prone to drunken outbursts, but she had been cheating on her husband with her ex for months. During one drunken stupor, she trashed all his work, destroying Parasol Stars in the process. Just to be extra petty, she broke the backup of the game too, which she regretted in hindsight. The developer had a prototype of Parasol Stars, meaning he could still finish it if he was given an extension. His company, Ocean Software, believed development on the ZX Spectrum version was taking too long, and so cancelled the port. Number 4. Crash Landed and Crash Team Racing What's more annoying than a game being cancelled for a dumb reason? That's right, two games being cancelled for a dumb reason. In 2010, Activision was preparing to release a prequel of the Crash Bandicoot series called Crash Landed. The game would revolve around a younger Crash travelling the land to protect endangered bandicoots. Around the same time, the company was working on another kart racing game called Crash Team Racing. Crash fans were super excited, as they were about to get two new games at the same time. While Crash Landed and Crash Team Racing were in mid-development, production on both games were cut short. Why was this? Well, when Activision heard Sony was preparing to buy the Crash franchise, they saw no reason to continue working on the games that would never see the light of day. However, this rumour was false. By the time Activision realised this, it was too late. All the company's workers had already moved on to other projects. Activision, the next time you decide to pull the plug on not one, but two Crash Bandicoot games, can you please double check your sources? Number 3. Ninja Gaiden Master System Version Taito's 1987 game Double Dragon single-handedly popularised scrolling beat-em-ups. Within a few years, there were tons of similar games including Final Fight, Captain Commando and Streets of Rage. Tecmo, who are best known for creating Ninja Gaiden, wanted to take advantage of this new style of gaming. When Tecmo partnered with Sega to make Ninja Gaiden for the Master System, they decided to tweak the game as a scrolling beat-em-up. 
Even though the developers completed cutscenes, bosses, and seven levels, Sega abandoned the project. Since Streets of Rage was the most popular game in the genre at the time, the company was worried Ninja Gaiden would take away sales. This was a ridiculous argument for two reasons. Firstly, there were loads of other beat em ups at the time, like Golden Axe and Altered Beast, that went on to become very successful. This would be like if Midway didn't release Mortal Kombat because they were worried it was too similar to Street Fighter. Secondly, if Ninja Gaiden took sales away, Away from Streets of Rage, Sega wouldn't lose any money because they owned both properties. Speaking of Streets of Rage, number two, Streets of Rage 4, Dreamcast version. Streets of Rage was one of the most successful franchises on the Mega Drive. 26 years after Streets of Rage 3 was released, the series finally got a sequel in 2020. But how come it took so long? Well, Streets of Rage 4 was supposed to come out for the Dreamcast during the millennium. During production, the president of Sega of America, Bernie Stolar, abruptly cancelled everything. Why? Because he had never heard of Streets of Rage, so he assumed it had no potential. First off, I have no idea why the employees didn't explain to him that Streets of Rage used to be Sega's hottest property outside of Sonic the Hedgehog. Secondly, how has he not heard of Streets of Rage? That's like if the CEO of Nintendo had never heard of Donkey Kong. The original Streets of Rage was so popular, it was bundled with the Mega Drive 2 for crying out loud. Thankfully, a brand new version of the game was released in 2020, much to the delight of fans. However, we could have played it nearly two decades sooner if it wasn't for Stolar's gross mismanagement. Number 1. Time Splitters 4 Free Radical Design's Time Splitter series is one of the most underrated trilogies in gaming. All three games received solid scores by critics on every console, despite the fact that games were never massively successful. Even though Time Splitters 2 was hailed as one of the best games on the Xbox, the GameCube, and the PS2, it only sold moderately. However, Free Radical Design wasn't going to give up. They would, just not yet. In 2007, they announced Time Splitters 4 was in development. After working on it for an agonizing five years, the game was suddenly axed. Why? Because the marketing team couldn't decide which character should appear on the game's box art. Believing the series had no marketable character, the company decided to terminate production. This reason for cancellation is insane since many iconic games have a generic character on the box art. Most Call of Duty covers are a generic soldier and that franchise has made billions. It's a huge shame that Time Splitters 4 was canned, as it would have been amazing to play a Time Splitters game that had five years of work put into it. And there you are, the 10 dumbest reasons why video games were cancelled. But let us know what you think was the dumbest reason down in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button. And remember to click that bell icon to be notified of any new videos coming your way. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rhea from What Culture Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.